Welcome to Documentation Office Hours. It's the 20th of January, 2022. Um, we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Thanks for being here. So today's agenda items I've got, we have news, the weekly change log and uh, weekly release, which has some special cases going on for it. Open PRs, the Contributhon next steps and improve a plugin tutorial are all possible topics. Any other topics that we want to add to the list? That looks good to me. All right, so. Um, Hello. Hi, Zainab. Thanks for joining. Hi, Zainab. Good evening. Good evening. So in terms of end of Java 8, end of life, I've set the goal to have the, uh, uh, the Jenkins enhancement proposal drafted and ready to go before the next meeting of the Platform SIG group, which is next Friday. Uh, I may ask for a review help at Monday's Docs office hours and at next Thursday's Docs office hours. I'll let you know. I assume you're all willing to read it and comment um, even if only on whatever aspects are comfortable for you. Absolutely. And Internet Explorer end of life, we're not going to use a Jenkins enhancement proposal for it. Uh, we'll just plan to uh, drop support from weekly in the next two to three weeks. And then it will be the removal of support will be visible in the June LTS. So if you're using Internet Explorer 11 on Windows, please switch to Microsoft Edge. If you don't have Microsoft Edge, please switch to a different operating system so that you can get an, a, a web browser. Use, use a modern web browser. Weekly change log, the uh, weekly release this week has been delayed uh, due to a repository outage. Uh, now the, uh, we've got a, a failing test that is further delaying the release. The release team is working on, an infrastructure team is working on it now. So, Jenkins 2.331 uh, is still coming, it's still arriving, it's not yet arrived. Next topic then, open PRs, this is the fun one. All right, so Meg, any order you would like us to attack these? Um. Can I add a topic? Sure. Git pod. So um, I and Elizabeth were able to success, um, successfully set it up and um, build the Jenkins project. Good, excellent, that's yeah. great. Yeah, so um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that I noticed while setting it up. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not compulsory, but um, to be able to get the green um, Git pod icon that we saw while Jean-Marc was presenting, um, I had to install a Git pod browser extension to be able to do that. Sorry. Oh, that's great. Don't let the baby's making the baby's noise is not a problem. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sorry a... about that. So um, it's not compulsory. So what the what the extension does is um, normally for you to be able to access your workspace, what Gitpod does is that it adds um, it prefix your normal GitHub URL with a Gitpod URL. So for instance, you have something like HTTPS, um, I think gitpod.io slash ash, then followed by the GitHub URL. 
So what that button do, does is that it just um, does that for you and opens your workspace in a new brow, um, browser tab. That's what it does. So it's not compulsory that you have that, but for ease of use, you can um, add browser extension that adds that button for you. So it does it automatically. Um, I think there is another alternative to adding the to adding the browser extension, but I didn't go that route because it looked um, much longer. Um, so I haven't tested that. Then another thing is if you want to um, run the Jenkins project, you have to ensure that your fork is um, updated. Because I think one mistake I made before, while I, when I um, started using Gitpod was I didn't pull um, the recent changes from Jenkins master. So when I tried to do make one, I was having some errors. I think probably because the git pod um, file that wasn't on my own um, branch or my own fork. So, um, but after I pulled the changes from upstream, everything worked um, perfectly. Um, then the last thing is for you to be able to push changes and pull changes, you need to grant Gitpod the necessary permissions on the settings page for you to be able to push or pull changes using um, your workspace on GitHub. So yeah, I think for now, those are the three things I've noticed up to the point. I haven't yet um, done any changes or done any work or opened a pull request. So maybe I might notice other things. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Zina. That's great. Okay, so the, the way I interpreted then the Git pod button turned out to not be required, but it is crucial that you update your fork from the upstream. So that yeah. that magical button, and I need to go check that mine is, this one is the one I'm used to using where I go git, github, and then I look at jenkins.io, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Not Jenkins bugs, but that's close enough. Jenkins.io. And then I click the button here that says fetch upstream and it will tell me, oh, and yeah. I am one behind. So then I click yeah. that button and now it's up to date. Yep. Excellent. Okay. And there are command line ways to do that as well, but that UI way is easy enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when you did that, you said make run was then passing for you when it had been failing before. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Excellent. Great. Very, very good. Thank you. Okay. Now on this one, I'm not sure I understand the Gitpod permissions. So when you say the settings page, is that my settings like here? Yeah, on Git on Gitpod. Um, on Gitpod. Gitpod. Oh, on Gitpod settings. Yes. Ah, okay. So my settings here. And the yeah, so settings set page is right there. Yeah. Yeah. So integrations. Yeah. GitHub. Okay. And this was the thing I that was important. Permissions. Yeah. Okay. So you have to do this for you to be able to push any changes or, um, yeah, to push any changes to your fork. Otherwise, you just have read permissions. Interesting. Okay, thank you. And and now that did not. Yeah. So and in this case, I at least I granted it only public repository public, permissions. Yeah. So it can't even see my private repositories, and I, I wanted yeah. that because my private repositories may be sensitive. Okay. Good. Excellent. Anything else you wanted to share on the GitPod experience? No, nothing else. Okay. So see the video on community.jenkins.io. And I need to paste that just to be sure that we've got a reference to it. OK. 
Okay. It is using gitpod.io for faster development. This one. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Zena. Both of you. Glad that you're able to make it work. That's great. Yeah, Anything? but otherwise it it was really great because um I think I was able to set it up in like less than 15 minutes. Yeah, it didn't take so much time. Yeah, it didn't take so much time. It was really easy to figure out. So I think it's great. Now, and Elizabeth in particular, I assume you may be in an area where internet performance may not be as fast as it is for Zinab in, in the UK where she's at. Was your perception that it performs reasonably? Did it feel fast enough for you? Yes, um, it did actually. It felt faster for me because um, I, changed, um, I changed my um, um, internet plan yesterday after that account I, um, I had during the last call. So I had to change it to something else. So it was, um, it's better now, it's better. Off. Very good. All right. So that's, that's because one of, one of the worries for me for the Contributhon is, is not everyone who's in the Contributhon may have reliable internet all the time. Hmm. But, but it sounds like web browsing was comfortable for you and, and doing development over the browser worked well enough. Yeah, Very good. All right. Excellent. Thank you. So then we may we may want to continue that. I wonder now. Let me make a note to myself. Should we consider the developer video series that uses Gitpod as pre-work, pre-study for uh, She Code Africa Contributhon participants. So we've got, a, we've got a video series that includes doing many operations, even on, Git plug, on Jenkins plugins, not just on the Jenkins doc site using mm. Gitpod. And so it uses Gitpod in many other ways to do development without requiring a local installation. Oh. Good, okay. Open question then, excellent. Thank you. Um, so about PRLs, okay. Uh -huh. This is about issues anyway, issue. I saw a good, so I was trying to kind of like test out, you know, working and opening a PR using Gipod. So I saw an issue on Jenkins.io that I wanted to ask about because I wasn't really sure um, the full details of the issue. I wanted to work on it. Shall we look at it? Yes, please. Okay, so let's go oh, to- The only one I saw that nobody had picked up, the only good first issue I saw that nobody had picked up. Okay. Mm. So you're looking for a good first issue. Yes. All right. So, yeah, the second one. Ah, good. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so your question probably this one, I'm I'm a little fearful that making it a good first issue may have been misleading, but let's let's take a look at it together and do some quick okay. review of what needs to happen here. Yeah. Okay, so, so first, this says that Jenkins Wiki was made read-only in October 2019. That is absolutely correct. It mm -hmm. should probably be extended to say that Jenkins Wiki was, and I'm going to open up the tab to show the page, the Jenkins Wiki server was attacked in September of 2021. And mm -hmm. the attack did enough damage to it that we decided not to bring it back online. See if I can find that. Where is it? September. Ah, here it is. Project. The Confluence instance was attacked. So in addition to now, today it says, hey, it was read only in 2019. 
-hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. because of this attack, it's just a static website. It's not even a Confluence server at all. Okay. So update. So you're what you're thinking to do is update the wiki conversion docs. And, and this is a great one to do because it very much needs to be done. So the wiki attacked in 2021 and the, the attack, we couldn't be confident that it was not um, somehow damaged. So we never brought it back online. It's now back as back as a static, as static web pages. Mm. all right so so that's the uh, early and now whoops now migrating from wiki to github no longer requires so document migration this portion of well let's see how do let's talk through this okay Oh yes, this is plugin documentation. Yeah, plugin wiki pages. Okay, so for plugin wiki pages, it's changed dramatically now, in that there is a plugin site. Uh, plugins dash nope. There it is. Where the translation has already been performed. So, so what's happened here is. The old instructions said things like, hey, run this Wick Jenkins wiki exporter and let it do the translation for you. Well, this entire step and its manual equivalent no longer are needed because okay. the translation of every plugin wiki page has been done and is now stored on this, this GitHub repository. Okay. So, so we can delete these two sections completely because okay. they, they don't make any sense. We just grab the changes from, from this already translated file. So let's, let's talk through it. So then the conversion of plugin pages is already started. And I say started rather than finished because there's inevitably changes that are needed in order to make it make it all the way to done. Okay. So for example, let's let's pick a plugin that we might, let's see, what's one that the easy way to find a plugin to translate is still through the Jenkins Wiki exporter service. And what we do here is we click the progress link and it will tell us a list of plugins that have not yet been translated. So as we scroll down here, okay, and PR merge, there's not anything that we can do as writers. Here we go, the Ansible plugin. And unfortunately, what we're going to see is that there's already a pull request submitted proposing to fix its documentation because I submitted it. <laughs> so, so we keep looking down. Groovy post build is the next one on the list. So let's look at it. And so what I did was I opened, I opened the web page for from this hyperlink. It takes me to this page and then I go to this GitHub link. Mm. And now we see here, okay, there is no, yes, no readme file. So there's, there's definitely no documentation for it. So now where do we find the documentation for the Groovy post build plugin? If we take that text and go over here to the GitHub repository, it has the, re- the translated repository goes in a directory like that. So here is the existing Groovy post build plugin translated already into Markdown. 
Wow. So what you, what the goal then is is to take this already this translated and oh, put it in the readme in a readme file in oh, exactly. Oh. So including the pictures, including everything. So so it's all there. And then the, the activity is convert from this format where what you see is a readme.md and mm. a doc slash images directory. Mm -hmm. That needs to be converted and copied into the destination plugin wiki page. Did you say converted? Uh, yeah, yeah converted is the wrong way. Copied is a better word, isn't it? Okay, okay. Because <laughs> there's, there's right. no conversion to be done. As far as I can anyway. tell, it's okay. this markdown file is ready to be placed there. Now, you may find as you read it that there are things that should be corrected or you may find spelling errors. You may find places where, for instance, this thing should probably mm -hmm. be in a source code font. You know, okay. those kinds of things you could do or choose not to do. But, okay. but this is already an excellent start. So you don't have to, don't have to do run any conversion steps yourself. Someone's already run the conversion steps. Okay. Wow. So um, now the process of the wiki uh, migration would be, okay, from the wiki exporter check, you know, um what if the documentation has been moved or not right so if it has not if it has not um click okay you click on it um go to the github page check if the, there is um document there's a readme um file with the documentation if not then you go to the repository we just seen we just saw now what's what's the title of the repository yeah plugin wiki docs to search for um, that plugin once you find it you copy the documentation um, in the readme dot a readme file there and the images and move it to the plugin um, to the plugin repository if i'm correct that's correct Okay, so that's what we are replacing the documentation in that page with right now. That's correct, right, exactly. Okay, okay, okay. And now this is one I, I would I would think that Meg may guide us here and say, hey, you know what? The images could also be check that the images are reasonably current. And the reason I say that is UI changes have happened. Okay. But more UI changes are happening in in uh, March 2022 LTS release. So worrying too much about this is maybe premature. Just be aware if the, if the images have words like Hudson in them, okay, that's a okay. really old image. If, the, okay. if, it, if it isn't super old, then you probably just leave it and we wait until the, the latest UI changes are out. All right. Great. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So, um, now, Elizabeth, you had warned that you might need to drop off. Hopefully, did we meet the needs that you had? Yes. Um, I, was, uh, I was just going to um, join with my second device. Well, um, I'll be here too. Oh, and you are you are perfectly welcome to go to your business meeting or your, to your other meeting. That's you can look at the, the recording later. This will be available as a recording as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, bye. All right. Bye. Yeah.
All right. So, Zinab, anything else on nope. the... Okay, great. That's it, yeah. All right. So, um, if you could assign that to me, or is there a way I can do it myself? I so don't think I... you can, but since you're working on it, let's assign you. Let's see. Um, no. No. It's, oh, Z A Y C O. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Got it. Oops. Okay. So just a minute. I have to. I need to mention you first. Wants to work on this. And the way you do that is you just say in a, in a comment, hey, I want to work on it. But yeah. I think now it will allow me to. No, maybe not. Huh. So you may have to you may have okay. to mention in a comment there. If you'll just put a comment on that issue me, issue, then I'll see if I can assign it. To I you. Can do that now. Okay. Um, and while we're here, I'm going to put a link, put this material in there in hopes it helps. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Oops, it would help if I learned how to write markdown. No, that's not right. It's got, oh, it's hash marks, right? Remember, there we go, okay. And Zinab, I don't see a comment from you yet. Yeah, I'm trying to sign in. Ah, okay, got it. Mm, verification code and all that. Welcome to two-factor authentication. Congratulations. <laughs> we have made sure that you are you because you both know something and have something. <laughs> Just trying to find the issue. Yes, sin. Okay. I like to work on this. I've dropped a comment. Oh, good. Very good. All right. So let me go find it. And it was where issues. Oh, we said it was good first issue. That's it. So there it is. Yeah. And let's assign. There we go. Okay. It's all yours. All right. Thank you. Thanks for being willing. Look forward to it. <laughs> okay. Onward to open PRs. Meg, you ready? Unmute, you can hear me better that way. Um, right. Do we want to do these or do we want to move on to uh, She Code Africa or planning while everybody's here? Good question. So I still have not published, I have not published the list of ideas we gathered from, from the last time. And so I'm going to do that. If there are additional ideas people have, we can certainly capture them. Because this was from the meeting that Zainab was not in, right? Uh, no, I think actually. Well, let's let's test it. Zainab, would you be okay if we spend a few minutes on Shikot Africa Contributeathon? Sure. 
Okay, so here's, here's we had a, a session on Monday and talked about possible ideas for projects. So inclusive naming, correcting the words master, slave, whitelist, blacklist, that mm -hmm. one you had already confirmed. And pipeline help, we tried last year and not a big deal. Test automation, I think I had discussed that with you and you thought that would be okay? Yeah, I think we've gone through, we went through all this in the last meeting. Okay, so the others, the others you'd seen like multiple tutorials, those you'd seen, we'd discussed before and you thought they were okay? Yes. Okay, good, all right. Okay, so then then I think we covered the, the She Code Africa topic and we're back to open PRs, Meg. Okay, um, do you want one that's a mess or do you want one that's cleaner? Uh, we do have well, that new one that I just did this week. Okay, so let's take the clean, one of the cleaner ones. Okay, um, go to open PRs and you'll... Okay. I started to do something quick and I slipped into a rabbit hole and I think I'm trying to slip back out because this is in your. Um, um, sorry, I'm going to have to drop off now also. No problems, you know, thank you. We're going to go ahead and do PR review then. Okay. Thank All you right. for being here. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wonderful. Um, 4832, I believe, clarify use of Maven bomb. Okay. Yeah, Monday, I thought, oh, I'll just write up this quick little thing. Because I thought the writing was kind of appalling. Okay, all right. So, and so the idea is here is let's review and now. <laughs> okay, Tim hasn't given his okay yet, but let's, let's do it. I a do review. not, and it's sort of, I'd like to see what you think of it. Because um, I didn't. That wasn't one that was easy for me to action on. Okay. Sort of, you know, what what can we assume that people know? Because there's a lot of stuff that I don't know that the user might know. So. Um, okay. So, are you okay if I just read through it together and let's? That would be let, lovely. Okay. Good. All right. So, plugins frequently have dependencies on specific versions of libraries and other plugins, each of which is versioned independently. Each plugin may have dependencies of its own and different versions of different libraries and, and plugins may not be compatible with each other. Moreover, the dependencies can change with each release. So managing these dependencies manually can be difficult and time consuming. Okay, I think that's an adequate statement. Okay, so now here we go. Jenkins Core Bomb, since Jenkins, uh, some, since some version Jenkins Core provides a Bill of Materials that centrally. Okay, so so I wouldn't it actually right, and up. It's moved. I would not. Oh, it's moved. Okay, so you yeah, moved yeah. it someplace else. Yeah, it's down below. Oh, okay, good. All right. So, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's and what it is. Wait, wait a sec. Where is? Oh, you know what? You might want to look at the preview. Yeah, let's let's do the preview. That's a good plan. So hang and on just it, a minute. See if it reads well. Because what I looked at before, it was dependency management. And then we had a subsection that was called the bomb. And that was where you got the error message. It was, you know, reading it, it took me trying to figure out what's going on. So I tried to restructure it a little bit and added some information. And right. So let's let's look at this for dependency management. Okay, so dependency management. All right. Okay, so the plugins frequently. Okay, so this. And and wasn't this previously below it? Yes, that was that was under the error message was under the header of Jenkins bomb. Okay, so so let's go. Let's go look. I, it will help me just to have my brain around. All right. So here is no. Okay. So oh oh, I see. Right. Got it. Okay. So previously there was a section titled Jenkins Core Bomb or Core Bill of Materials, and and 
it said there's this bomb and here's the error message if you have a dependency management problem right and and that that part i think i see your your logic in saying hey the error message thing is is yeah it may be related to that but really the concepts around the core bill of materials are broader than just you could have a a an upper bounds dependency problem right um okay so well and as long i mean we if we could be there's also the depend about in here so it, this whole page is not just about the bomb we could rename it as bomb but it dependency management is the issue well and and i and and, and i like bomb. so what tim noted is there are two two forms there's the plugin bill of materials and the core bill of materials and they're different things right and i and so so we need both of them here so is, this is what was described as the core bill of materials before, right? And we could we could expand the, the, the this, but rather than calling it Apache Maven, I think I would stay with Jenkins core bill of materials. Okay. All right. So let, well, and here let's just make the. Yeah, I I put that. Yeah, I I that was a writer making making trouble oh. well well just does that make sense to you if it's right so, yes as i yes this is the bill of materials and we'll say underneath it that this is only for if you're developing with maven right yeah well yeah so in the body text the, we certainly should say it is an it is an apache maven bill of materials right because this this link is a, is a good one to say, oh, what is a bill of materials? Well, here you click this to find out. Right. But but the fact that it's the bill of materials is Jenkins core and Jenkins uh -huh. core is, is you get it by using the current Maven parent, the current parent palm. And that's quite different from what you have to do Oh, no, 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 look, okay. All right, so this, this new text is mixing two things. All right, so this is saying to use the Jenkins core bomb, but then it gives instructions that show you how to use the plugin bomb. Okay, so we, we've got to split that back out. Okay, okay. so. Well, we didn't have instructions before. Got it. Okay, so it's so it's, I made that up, and so you know we're in trouble, right? There. Got it. All right, excellent. Well, so, but but I think I think this is good because what we should do is we've got two sections. I think we need two sections, one on the core bill of materials, which will just say use the most recent parent palm. Okay. Um. And now, does everybody just know what that is? It's not. I wanted to link to something, and I couldn't figure out what it could link to good good so so let's 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 see how do we how about maven that text was there before that's the only part of this that was there before and it didn't make sense before let's see if if we've got if maven has yes here we go i'm not sure i would rather prefer updating here it is so yes, we've got it. Very All good. Right. All right, and we've got a page in our world that talks about how to do this. So this is this is really good because it also has more explanation on what happens here with with um, require upper bounds and transitive dependencies and things like that. So so this is yes, excellent. Okay, so what we've got is. So, can you give me a suggestion that makes that parent palm reference a link to this? Yes, yes, absolutely. Let's go in and do. Let's go in and do some. Well, do you do you mind if I if I make my life easier and craft them in my text editor? Not at all. Okay, so I'm going to make the text bigger so it's readable, but 
it's just easier for me when we're doing these sort of sort of larger edits if i okay is that text readable very readable yes okay great all right so yeah the github editor gets tedious very quickly right right well and and i don't know that there's an awful lot of benefit to you to having it all come in as 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 suggestions right this this right. is going to be fairly fairly large in terms of moving blocks of text around right it's okay, so. to fix it right yeah sorry what was that oh i said you're just going to fix it you're going to i that's what i was going to do assuming you're okay with that absolutely okay so what i do is i check out that branch get merge master okay all right, so we're up to date with master. And that noise tells me that you need to do a, you need to remember next time you interact with your fork on GitHub, mm -hmm. don't forget to do this action where you go to the code page. Click. I just did that when we were talking about it. It's like, hmm. cause I, I was having weird stuff with make run last night. Ah, like, okay, good. I'm like, oh yeah, that's why I knew that. Right. And so just just be sure you do the fetch upstream thing. Great. Right. Okay. So then. All right. So now what I've done is I've and I need to see which files have been changed. Okay, so this is the file that's changed. Good. Okay, so we'll put that in the background. And this is the file that we we want to edit. We're gonna do some, some modifications to it. Yeah. So first I wanna see what master, okay, so. Okay, so the, Okay, this text I like a lot. Okay, but I don't want to give up the Jenkins core bomb thing. So I'm going to temporarily bring that back. And we'll take out All right, so so brought back Jenkins core bomb. Keep your improved phrasing there. Okay, so now this is where we can get benefit from linking to the text that you had provided here. Right, because this was one of the crucial things here was. Okay, why do you want that before the error messages? Oh, okay. oh, good question. That was part of it. So I wanted to, at the beginning, I wanted to say, this is a nutsy thing to do manually. And here's what happens if you've got a problem. And ah. then the two solutions, because right now we've got two solutions, right? No, no, there's, a, there's actually, well. If there, I'm not they, doing Maven the bomb does me no good. If you're not, that's true. If you're not doing Maven, the bomb does you no good. But if you're not so doing Maven, you- this, We have a little bit about dependabot is the second. So the trick is if you're not doing Maven, you also won't get require upper bound dependency warnings. Oh. And the, re the reason is the tooling is not available in Gradle to tell us the same things because it's not been created as far as I know. Okay. So, so the- that tooling is, as far as I know, anyway, specific to, to uh, Maven. That's where Jesse invested the work to create it. Okay, so that's under Maven. So then that, okay, I've still got the structure wrong. So this should have, I before the bomb, I think, to me, it, should, it reads better if we say, if you, in Maven, if you don't do it right, you're going to get these errors, for example, here's your app. And then in that same section goes here how you, and then say we have this bomb that will fix it and here's how you use it. Ah, ah okay so so rather than giving an intro an intro first of 
what are the two forms of bill of materials and here are the errors you're suggesting let's start with hey if if here's a as the first thing upper bounds dependency message and then talk about and this is how you resolve it first by using current version of the the core bomb and second by using the bill of materials from the, or the the bomb from the plugin bomb to simplify your dependency management so should this ha actually can should this header be i don't like this but something like if you're if you're working with maven if you're working with maven you're going to get these upward dependency bomb and here you use the bomb to fix it Yeah, except that's a good question. I mean, you're thinking, should it be Maven dependency management? That I don't know, because I I think dependencies are managed in Gradle, and it specifies dependencies. It just doesn't have the same tooling available, if I remember correctly, to warn people about it. And in fact, it's largely assumed almost all plugins are, are done with Maven rather than Gradle. Gradle's quite exceptional when it's used. Right. And this is only for plugins, so we're not going to have plugins done with, say, Node.js or Make or something. Well, no, was... we're right. Definitely not. Okay. My, my problem was, and then the thing, I, at the very end, we have that little section about Dependabot, which used to be just a link to the discussion. Uh -huh. got slightly better, but that's so the question is what you know what do we do with this dependabot piece of it well and and the dependabot piece i think we can link to hang on just a minute let's see i thought that we had it now links to the github discuss it used to link to the the discussion that Oleg started a couple of years ago. Oh, okay, right. So the depend about the depend about stuff that's here is is woefully inadequate. Okay, so you what you've what your pull request has done is improved significantly by giving us something more than just just that one hyperlink. Improved slightly, and it got better because Tim Tim already busted me on that when he says this is way too old, and he just said reference GitHub and. I'm not convinced that that's enough, but but it's well, and 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 I'm definitely not convinced it's enough because here is let's see, let's go with Darren Pope modernizing a Jenkins plugin, and let's see. Okay, so I want the one that has. Oh, this is really cool, by the way. The chapters are made visible here in the search results. Oh, wow. <laughs> Isn't that great? Okay. So, Darren Pope enters the room. Yeah. Okay. So now here it is automate dependency update checks. Ah. So here is a video tutorial that we could embed in this location. Oh, fabulous. To say, look, this is some dialogue from two people talking about what it means to do Dependabot. Oh, wonderful. So if you look now, at the comments, there's a little discussion where Tim just says, well, just tell them, you know, link them to GitHub dependent. And I'm like, I don't think that's enough. Says, yeah, yeah, that's plenty. So, oh, this well, is, yeah, I'm trying to get out of this rabbit hole. This makes me feel much better about it. Well, and I think, I think that we could at least it's not, it's not terribly common for us to embed videos into developer docs, but I think there's no shame in doing it. I think it's worth it's us. We haven't had videos that we could embed, so. Right, okay, I agree, yes. So, so um, to upgrade. Yeah, that, just the end, to understand this or something. I'm sorry, what, say that again, Meg. Or I was going to say to understand you, your verbiage is just fine. Keep typing. Oh, I, I was just going to. So, so what this text is describing um, is that okay? Yes, you can use you can use Dependabot anywhere, 
Gradle or Maven, uh -huh. NPM, Docker files, etc. And if you're creating a new plugins, newly created plugins, Plugins built from the Jenkins archetype archetype include oh oh and here you've got the link even better. Newly created plugins built from the Jenkins plugin archetype include include Dependabot by default. Aha. That's what this ar archetype thing is. Okay. Existing plugins uh, need to enable Dependabot. Um, by adding configuration by, uh, how about need to, yeah, enable, no, configure, hang on, help me with this, depend about in their existing plugin repository. Ah. Okay, now, um, now we look at the video. Right. Okay, and this is where I have to get the correct syntax to embed the video. So just a minute. Okay, so I have to go up a level or two or 20. Just a minute. And you know, I should remember these things, but I sincerely do not. There is a very I, specific syntax for these things. It looks like exactly this. And that's what we do. Okay, and then we copy this exotic string here to here. And now I need to find the one that lets me do an offset. Where is it? Come on. Somewhere, oh, start equals, there we go. Okay, that's perfect, start equals. Nine eighty seconds, okay. So how about making um the oh, go ahead. Continue. What's that? Making that existing plugins, make that a new paragraph. Oh, sure. And like that? And, and then say this video will tell you how or this video will help. Oh, you. yes. The video below. See okay. the video below. Just like below for now, here's a cat video too. An illustrated an example adding depend about to an existing plugin repository. Oh, thank you, thank you. Okay. I looked at this and I knew it was bad and I didn't know what to do about it and. Well, and thank you very much for doing it. Okay, so, so depend the bot can be used to simplify. And it's good with having a video link as the last line in the file. It is, yes, that should be well. And here, we're now going to have the fun part of let's go watch and see how it looks in preview. 
there's more to be done still here, but it's best to if we just run the compile. Yeah. Let's see how it looks. Okay, so here's the window, how it looks. Documentation, developer guide, how-to guides, dependency management. Okay, Jenkins core bomb. Okay, this still needs some additional work, but then here's the video embedded. And if I click it, it should start playing. Uh, nope, okay, so I made a mistake. That's why we test. Ah. Okay, so it may be that it doesn't like the S. Okay, let's refresh this page. If I press play, yes, there it is. This time it started 16 and 20 minutes in. 60 minutes, 20 seconds. Okay. All right. Okay, so now, and if you're okay, I'm sort of running out of time, but I think I'm just gonna continue making, are you okay if I continue making tweaks to what you had created, Megan? Oh, I'll just push it right to your- But I am just so happy, yes. Okay, great. So I'll continue, I'll make some additional tweaks because this description of the plugin bill of materials, I think makes a lot of sense. Okay. Now the question is for you, this is the core bill of materials. Right, and now. Now, what do they need to do with the plugin bill of materials? So this is the one where they have to do the exotic steps that you describe here of go find the release you're using, copy the dependency management section, et cetera. So, so if they've just, got the parent plugin, they just get the, they don't have to do anything. They've got the bill of Well, and, and okay, that's a good one. That's, that's where. That's what I did not understand. I went right over my head. Yeah, so well, so and let me try to describe that one. So um, that's illustrated by a different video from Darren, actually uh -huh. the same series, but it's it's segment one in it, update the parent palm. And let's, you know what, should we have this page have two videos on it? I mean, I, I don't know that that's too excessive, is it? I don't think so. Okay, so. I mean, I, we just, you know. I'd, I'd be hard put to get somebody to go out and do a video just to support this, but if we've got it. Yeah, exactly. No way would we want to spend the energy, but we've already got this video that, that here, let's, let's, let me. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe it's a separate, I wonder if it's a separate subheading. So let me, let me proffer this as an idea to you. Okay. This, this section describes the concept. Right. Jenkins core bill of materials. This shows the error. What if the next thing were a, a, a level heading further in and we said uh, updating the Jenkins core bill of materials. Because this is the solution to many of the problems, to some of the problems that have this. Okay. And here it is. Um, we then embed Darren's video. And let me go grab that again. And I think it just has a different start. It, it may actually even be a different video. But that one starts much earlier because the very first task that we did, that Darren and I did in the video series was to update the parent palm. Update the, which is what does the update to the 
Jenkins Core Bill of Materials by using the most recent project object model, POM version, you get the Jenkins Core Bill of Materials. Right. Um, what, what I would like here, oh God, writers are such a pain in the butt. At the beginning of the, the very beginning of this thing where we tell them the problem, uh -huh. if you do it manually, you're gonna screw yourself. Right. Um, and then let's have another paragraph that says, this is, but says, you've got tools here to get you out of this. Oh, oh, very good. And, All right. Now that we're taking an interest, a bullet, and it says there's the, the Jenkins Core Bill of Materials, and which you just get, and this solves this. And then there's the plugin build of materials, and you will need to man, you'll need to go in and modify your code to pull that in or something. I only have to, but you know what I'm good. saying? Up at the front, tell me where we're going and what they're for. Right. Okay, now, now, yeah, and, and so, okay, so, so the outline you're envisioning is, hey, here's the, here's the background information. Mm -hmm. Background information here. Here's then. That. Now tell me where we're going right there before we get to the header. Okay, so help me understand that. So this okay, in the, the new paragraph and say, this is bad. Jenkins gives you tools to fix to easily, or I don't want to say easily because it's not going to fix everything, but Jenkins provides tools that help you manage this colon. Okay, so dependency management. All right. Uh, hmm. Okay, so Jenkins provides tools that simplify dependency dependency management. Okay, that's that's the and then colon, and then I want a, just a simple, very simple, a bullet list of we have the core bill of materials that solves blank. Right, core bill of materials uh, for. Tell me what that does, and then the plugin bill. In other words, describe them, and then add Dependabot with like a very, very brief description. That's just to wrap my head around what's coming. Okay, good. All right. And then the section on the plugin bill of materials, I'd make it a high level. I put it up on the second level. I make all those three things be the same level of heading. That makes sense. Okay, say that say that last part again. I down there you made the plugin bill of materials a subheading to the right. Board. Yeah, so I, I so what up. you're saying there yeah. is and okay, so what I was thinking was okay, so core bill of materials this is really a reference to the Right, it's actually, it's a... And then this similarly. Uh-huh. And so, because there's a section on, there's a heading on plugin bill of, oh, there will be a heading on plugin, plugin bill of materials. Right. Okay, now is it, is it okay if Jenkins core bill of materials were changed to just core bill of materials? Or do you have strong feeling it needs to nope. say Jenkins core? I, I do not have strong feelings at all. Okay, all right. Yeah, we're in Jenkins, you know. <laughs> Oops, and then. <coughs> Although, and now don't we use, we use sentence case, don't we? I accept bill of materials is a, we get an acronym for I. Oh, oh, right, right, right. You're right. That's, and that's probably reason enough right there to, okay. Might, and might even put the bomb in there. Now, what I'd love to have is if I'm coming to this cold, 
give me uh while you stand on one leg what each of them do for me okay right so let's do so okay so now uh to centrally define library versions used or provided by by Jenkins core. Okay. And then what does the plugin bill of materials do separately? That's and what... plugin bill of materials uses actually and now I need to praise it in verb in with a verb. Okay. So it really centrally defines library versions provided by Jenkins. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. And this centrally defines the plugin versions that are known known to work well together. Okay. Now, how do we say that? Uh, that? How about this way? Have been that have been tested together. Yes. Okay. And depend about. Uh, proposes pull requests when new library, new versions of libraries or plugins are released. Proposed, proposes, present tense. Mm -hmm. So does that, does that give the picture you were thinking? Yes. Okay. It, it makes, to me, because I don't know this stuff, it makes it all, because then I just started running in, there's this and there's this, and you might like this, and I I couldn't figure out what we were doing and how they related, and yes. Okay, and, and now is it kosher that we say that I actually put bold text yeah, and then so that people out. realize these things are different. It's like, well, wait a sec, centrally defines versions. If I don't detect the word library there, I may not understand why I need both of them. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then depend about proposes, and now there be may there may be objections have been tested together, but truly that's what happens. This right. thing, this plugin bill of materials, regularly evaluates combinations of plugins in context to be sure that they play play together at least well enough to pass their own automated tests. Right. And maybe it defines a set of plugin versions or something. Oh, oh yes, yes, that's very good. Yes. Well, although how is that different than a set of library versions? Yeah, so. It's not a library, yeah. Yeah, maybe both of them need it. Well, except that, see, for me, the there's a, and maybe, I don't know if there, we're conveying the difference here, but the difference, a, a, core, a core bill of materials, no, is it really? No, so. So I'm not, I think, I think we're fine with set of to describe plugin versions because it, it, it is a collection. Library right. versions to me is not nearly as much of a set as it's describing what's actually in, in Jenkins. This right. thing so is describing library. things library. that you might optionally choose. Is library versions the one, that sentence somehow, it doesn't make sense to me quite, it's getting there. Okay. Provided by this, for this Jenkins release or this version of Jenkins or see and and that's the piece that that I don't want to state that because I think that's inaccurate because if we look at at um parent palm version numbers they are not tied to Jenkins versions okay so for instance let's look at a plugin I maintain it uses the current version of the parent palm and its version 4.33, which is utterly unrelated to any Jenkins version number. Right. And yet somehow that number plus this Jenkins.version 
cause this build to know that it's it's being targeted to Jenkins 2.289.1 and nothing older than that. Right. So wording wise, I wasn't I wasn't comfortable putting Jenkins core here. I'm actually maybe core uh, identified by the Maven property. Jenkins dot version. Now, I wow. think that there's a danger that's wrong, but but I think that may be what's ha what what is happening. Okay, yeah, because without that, what the it almost sounded like this is how I build. This is defining the library versions to you. It's we're saying for this release, this is you know a curated set of some. Yeah, we'll play with it. The Sometimes when you step away, you'll come back and you'll know exactly what to do with it. Yeah, see that that's the piece. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Well, I mean, we can certainly set it there and see what what feedback from others is received. What if it was defines a curated set of library versions? Well, because it's in this case, this one, plug-in bill of materials, I might call curation. Okay. Because it it truly is choosing things for you in advance. Core bill of materials, they're inside the Jenkins core. You don't get to choose. If you, if you say, I want library X and Jenkins already got it, uh, I think that's the one you get. I guess what it, because I could, if I wanted to, I could specify a different library version to use, right? You could, but if I if I understand correctly, you won't get it. But but they're okay. So are these the? Uh, am I? If I'm building for this release, I can only use the library versions that are in the bomb. Correct. Okay. But, but at least that's my understanding. The core bill of materials only says Jenkins core at this version has this this ver this num version of. Uh, let's pick a library like. Oh, what's a good one? JNI. That's a relatively obscure one, but it's still bundled, if I remember correctly. And the and and you can't get another version because it's built into core. Okay. This is just a huge improvement, and it looks like Tim Jacob. Maybe somebody else will on review will critique it or something. Well, and, and and they may say, hey, look, Mark, you didn't understand. And then then everybody gets, we all gain knowledge if if I've if we've said it wrong. Mm -hmm. And you're getting closer. Well it's yeah, I, I hope it's not further away. That's <laughs> that's that would already be a big well, I, you know with that I some of his comments and with that one it's like I still don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> right. Because yeah, well, what struck me in the meeting on Monday was we opened the doc and I glanced at it and it was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then you started to talk and it all made sense. Oh, well, so that just and says I can. What I realized was that there was stuff in your head that was not on this paper. Mm. And not everybody that tries to do this is probably going to have the luxury of having you walk them through it. So, right. So that's what I was trying to capture. Yeah. And I didn't mean to foist more work on you, but if you want to do it, I'll be eternally grateful. Yeah, well, in, in this case, it's it's a good. Ah. Yes. Yeah. So plugins depend on specific versions of libraries and of other plugins. Each each versioned independently. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Each plugin may have dependencies of its own, and each plugin and each, each each dependency may have dependencies of its own, and different versions of libraries and plugins may not be comp Yes. Okay. Ah, so you want to make each dependency may have dependencies, not each plugin. Well, is that are you would is that okay with you? I mean, it, for me, it hints the the transitive nature of this thing, the recursive nature of it. Yeah. Mark, you know what you're talking about, and I don't. So almost any suggestion you have in mind is just probably fine with me. So, yeah. yeah. OK. 
Okay, good. All right. Jenkins has tools that simplify dependency management. The core bill of materials. Yes, the plugin. And now there may be some precision com comments from, from Daniel, for instance. I could see him saying, hey, there are still some Jenkins plugins that are bundled in core. Uh -huh. And he might then say, ah, and those plugins are here. But for me, I'm treating that as such an exceptional case that plugins bundled in core, I'm treating differently. Okay. Because I, I, I'm trying to avoid saying here, plugin and library versions, because I don't want the complexity for the mental model of the user of the reader, right. that they have to think, oh, these things are are somehow overlapping sets. I want them right. to have, even if it's a flawed perception, the perception that they are not overlapping sets. Right. If you wanted to, down in the detailed section, we're talking about the core bomb. Uh -huh. you could add a note that says there are a few plugins that are included in core and those will be you know you can make that as a note ah uh, okay right which which gets but i i still don't need to know that just going into here right exactly okay so uh, i apologize i'm i think i've got to reach a point of stop here yeah. so i'm going to go ahead over i'm just eternally grateful well, we'll we'll continue working it together. I'll push some 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 text up there. You review it. We'll then rely on Tim or others to review it and see if there are are changes that they want to recommend. Right, and then list of tasks. I don't know what you and Dirac got into after I was not on the line. I don't know if there were other things to do either. List of tasks. Sorry, which list of tasks? Oh, when you get into how you implement the plugin bill of materials. Oh, oh, that and and that, yeah, that I'll I'll try to put some words around it just to right. just because it's that one really is well illustrated by the video, and it's more an exercise of trying to find a way to phrase in the in simple bullet form some of the conversations that Darren and I had in the video. Okay, and I mean it may be that you, I like having something that I can look at without pulling up the video again. Agreed. But, but it may be that you that you just say you're going to need to do this and see this video to find out. Or no, because I don't want to requ require people to to deal with spoken English, right? Uh, that yeah. I think giving them a written a written description is very healthy, just like uh, you did. Bulleted list is very very good. Um, I could go in and uh, watch the video and make a new list. Well, you're certainly welcome to. That would be great. Let me okay. and and I I may offer some some suggestions, those would all be wonderful. Okay, and I've got a phone ringing and you need to go. All right, thanks, Meg. Bye. Bye-bye.